don't like that. You ain't look like you for him. All right, welcome, welcome. Straight up, no chaser. You are here. The day is the day. Uh, I am your host, Pastor Nick, and my awesome wife. Hi, I'm Dr. Rhonda Travitt. We are coming at you, coming to you, coming for you today. And today, we're going to hit y'all with a part two. Uh, we actually had a great time on last week. We were able to address and discuss a lot of things. So we're going to stick with the same topic that we talked about last week. So this will be part two of Divorce. Everyone that's tuning in, we ask you please call in 770-988-6461. And we actually have any questions, we'll provide answers. And uh, once again, if that's you that's on the verge of going through this, then we can possibly give you some clarity. And, uh, you know, who knows? God will probably intervene. But in the meantime, uh, we've introduced ourselves. Starting on my left, we have our uh, panel to reintroduce themselves. I'm Jackie Jackson. I'm Candace Daly. I'm Ebony. All right. So there you have it. So again, we're talking about the voice tonight. Please uh, go to Facebook, hit your share button, and uh, let everybody know. I believe you can also tune in via YouTube. And um, yeah, so we're going to get into a nice topic. Call so, in 770-988-6461. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we going to talk about today? Divorce. Where we start? I think, first of all, we'd like to uh, find out how long you both, everybody on the panel was married. Okay. For myself, 24 plus years. 10 years. Two years. Okay. So, we have a very diverse panel tonight again. Yes, we do. And so, um, just to do a little recap from last uh, week, mm -hmm. um, finding out how long everybody was married. At what point in the relationship, after 20 years and 10 years and two years, did you realize enough is enough or it's time to walk away? Well, for myself, it was. I knew it was time to walk away when my ex was on drugs and that started to affect my home life and my kids and I knew then this just wasn't gonna work. It was gonna go nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drugs. So drug that'll do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that'll do it. Okay. Wow. You know, after twenty five years, I mean how long was he on drugs before you found out that he's on drugs? I I believe I suspected but I wasn't quite sure and I think he was on drugs like maybe two or three years before I actually say, yeah, this is what it is. Because he kept saying, no, you know, I would never, you know, he would talk about his friends that was on drugs, and I don't see how they could do that. But he himself at that time truly was on drugs. Can you give women a sign, you know, just from that experience? Because I know some people that are dealing with certain things. Can you give us signs of a person, a relationship in the marriage where that spouse is on drugs and we're in denial or we don't believe it or maybe we just never even, it never came across our minds. Just little tad bits. It may not be, you know, uh, for everybody, but just signs and symptoms. For me, when he became very... I'm not gonna say manipulative, but he became very sneaky and very cunning. And because he had to always stay like maybe a step or two ahead of me because he was stealing. You know, he was taking the mm. bill money. He was lying about things. And he knew how to do stuff that I just never thought about to get money. You know, I would go to work and he would come back home and take things out of the house and sell it. And I'm thinking he's at work, but he wasn't. And then I'm missing things. And I'm saying, well, what happened to this? Or what happened to that? And you know, it didn't matter. Whatever was he would sell my dishes if they were wow. in a box anything that was boxed up that was new or look new he would sell it and so I started to miss things and like I said he became so cunning you know and for him that was just like out of the ordinary for him to be so cunning and he lied my god he lied just about anything but any and everything you know mm, okay. and then I could tell because I'm sorry yeah. I could tell because his speech and he started to like smack his mouth a lot, you know, like he had to dry mouth. I know that sounds crazy, but for me, no. that was a sign, honestly, because it's like somebody you're talking to somebody and all the time. He's like, well, what's wrong with you? Do you need some water? And but I, I, I noticed everything. And for me, that was a huge sign. Wow, that's a huge sign. Yeah. All right. That's some good advice, and you know you got to pay attention in this dispensation because people are really trying to numb their pain. 
or numb their anger or numb their frustrations. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that we're on a high epidemic of um, opiates and everything else mm -hmm. in this season. So uh, that's good, good, very good information to know. Um, Miss Candace Daly, tell us um, at what point you knew that it was time to walk away after 10 years. Okay, so our story was a little different because my husband and I married, divorced, and remarried. So this was the second go-round. Um, and we were never totally estranged because we had children. So we were always, um, even when we lived in different states, we would travel frequently so the kids would always be able to see him. But um, my, my signal was when the communication was just dysfunctional. Like it, it was like living in a house with a roommate that maybe you found in the newspaper. So it wasn't. <laughs> wm wow. <laughs> it sounds really bad. But it wasn't like even a roommate, like a friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. A roommate, friend, buddy. This was like a stranger on both ends. Like my husband and I, we, were ne we never got to the point where you hear married couples say, you know, my husband can look across the room and know what I'm thinking. We never got to even that level of, I know you, you know me. Um, we were cordial, but as the kids began to get bigger, in my mind, I'm thinking this is absurd. Like this is not, this is not a life. And um, you know, when you just rather be anywhere else but home, mm. and it was on both ends, like mm -hmm. you know, I drive around the block, you know, <laughs> not come home, or you know, he would go to the grocery store, and it's an hour later, and I call, he's reading comics at the Publix, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, okay, somebody got to come home, and really, for for me, we had been married before, and I think we both thought that it was the external situation around us that made the marriage not work. So mm -hmm. this time, in my mind, I'm thinking we're in a different place around different people, a different church. It's going to work. But when it became evident that none of those different variables made a difference, wow. that's when I'm like, what's the point? Because we're reliving this mm -hmm. and, um, you know, different situations, same, same story. So how was that during the courtship, you know, were you friends during the courtship? Was there sparks? Was there flames during the courtship? Or did it just sizzle out? Yeah, there was infatuation. And there was, I think, on the part of both of us, a feeling that we were getting old. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying, I never thought I would be this age getting married. Like, I think we both thought we would, you know, early 20s, you know, you know, right out of college or in college, find the person. And, you know, I was 27. I turned 28 right after I got married. And my husband's like two years older um, than, I, than I am. So I think that was a lot of the driving force. Mm. We, we were around um, friends that were getting married. Like, everybody was getting married. Ooh. And um, this is no blame. This is, this is no... Mm -hmm. But we were in an environment where... Um, marriage was encouraged. It's funny. <laughs> marriage was encouraged because married, I believe, married couples were more stable. So we were all young college people, you know, coming yeah. out of college, single. So in an environment where, you know, you're trying to build a community, trying to build a ministry, married couples are more stable. And mm -hmm, so there mm -hmm. was a lot of marriage. I don't know what the other people's stories were. But I know I'm looking at everybody's getting married. I'm getting older. We had a few things in common that seemed to encourage us and the people around us to say, y'all be a good couple. Y'all got this in common. And we were like, yeah, we do. We do have these things in common. But we started dating like in the end of January. We got engaged in March and got married in August. Oh, wow. So that yeah. was, and before that, we were acquaintances. So it wasn't like this was a friend from school or, you know, a, a college friend. This was an acquaintance, and we had been together in a group setting, but never, we never got to, we never got to be, like, real, real friends. Real friends. You know? So age factor and then... 
for lack of a better word, peer pressure, you know, or the power of suggestion, you know, that, okay, you guys are great. Mm -hmm. And then along with, you know, the age, it's like, okay. Right. Okay. And then I had come out of a long, before that, I had been in a long relationship that I thought would have ended in marriage, and it didn't. And so I'm like, I don't have another six years. Mm. Give it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's a good point because so many people want to get married quickly because of their age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I'm running out of time. Mm-hmm. And then they run into <clears throat> hell. Yep. For <laughs> lack of a better word, they run into the disaster and what is just too much because of age that's a good point you're you're the youngest one I am. so <laughs> and you had two years yes. so you didn't stay 10 you didn't stay um 20 because right. <laughs> you're in your 20s <laughs> okay so tell us what was the point that you knew that it was time to walk away um the point for me was when i found out that he had had sex with my sister your sister yes okay yes and i tried to stay but even after that it's like nothing changed it's like he just wouldn't change and wanted me to get over that fast and i just couldn't do it i couldn't get over it and um it wasn't just my sister i believe you know the infidelity continued um i remember coming home going away for a vacation for like two or three days and coming back home and there was a condom on the table Mm. And I was like, oh, we just real bold now. So it's time for me. To, I, I just was numb at that point when I saw that. I was like, I got to know who I am, and I'm, I'm better than this. So was there remorse? Was there remorse once that it was realized that you found out about the sister? And on um, both parties, you know, because that's, that's, that's a lot. Two mm-hmm. years in, could that have been going on all the time? Oh, I believe so. Wow. <laughs> That's the hardest thing for me because we were together four years before we got married. Oh, wow. wow. So it was like, y'all was y'all been doing this. And he claimed, to, like, to me it wasn't remorse because when I confronted him about it, the day I found out, he was like, the first thing out of his mouth was, it wasn't a lot. And I was, like, um, beating him up, literally. Like, it shouldn't have been at all. Like, what do you mean it wasn't a lot? Like, <laughs> like, and then you still can look me in my face. It wasn't like we weren't together. We were always together. So I, I you know, beat myself up for a while and still sometimes because I'm like, we were always together, always up under each other. And you could look me in my face wow. the next day after doing what you did. That's what amazes me for both of them. Both of them. So all of you guys were friends. You and your sister were close. In a sense. It's like we were, but then when I look back, it was like to her, I was the other woman because she was having sex with him too. Wow. So, but you and your sister's relationship, were you close prior to that? Um, Uh, Did you ever have a relationship? Because it's, it's something detached, I feel, about a person that can sleep with mm-hmm. your sister's husband. That's why I always say, you know, be very careful who you bring in your home. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, a girlfriend or family member, you know, it, it's you have to be very careful. Another man, a brother, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there's problems mm-hmm. or little things that you think are not, mm-hmm. you know, big things. But if that person sees those things, then they're trying to minister to those things. Yeah, our relationship was always a little rocky because I'm four years older than her. So, and she's the youngest, so it was like, and we're the only girls out of four boys. So it was like, everything I did, she wanted to do, but it was like, you're not old enough to do what I'm doing. Mm, okay. You're not old enough to be around my friends. Like, I don't want you around us. Or around me all the time. So. so there was always competition. Yes. And when you all went through this, everybody was in the church. This is a church program, so we don't want to think you, think that this is not <laughs> happening in the church. Yes, everybody was nice. ch- yes. in church. Mm-hmm. You and your husband was in church. Yes. Your husband we were in church. 
Yeah, I was in church. He was. But you were in I church. Was. But, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, wow. 